everyone like to talk about themselves, I guess. So let's create our About Us page. In the top, we have a hero area with a nice dark gradient in the top image. And we have the divider shape that you recognize from our homepage. If we scroll down, we have some nice animated number counters and an image and some text. So we'll use a specialty section here. And further down, we have our history in the two columns of text with a button. Then we have uh, some blurbs describing our services and products with a nice subtle background image. If we scroll down, we have uh, maybe the most important resources of this company. It's the employees. So I put a little bit extra energy to make them look really nice, these contact cards. And if we hover, we can see that there are color in the uh, images. And we also have nice shadowing effect. So if we scroll further down, we recycle the logos uh, also known from the homepage. Okay, so let's get started and uh, we can actually take another route. We go to the WordPress dashboard. We go to pages and now we can click about us in the list of our pages. And uh, we close this one and click edit with the Divi builder. So that's another way to edit the page. And I will choose a build from scratch. You could, of course, import a pre-made layout, but uh, that's not what we are doing here. So we start building. Okay, so this is the design that we are looking for. And uh, I will actually make a little trick here. I will not use one column here, as you would think. I would use another column structure here. Uh, I will actually use this one. And the reason for that is that I don't want the text so, to go all the way out. And this is an alternative to using width or max width for the modules. Uh, you can also use a different row structure. So I'll begin with adding a text module. And we could actually copy and paste this text just to save some time. So let's click this one and paste this text. I'll copy it. We make some proper spacing. And this one should be uh, age four. This one should be an age one. And we have actually not styled this in the global presets. So that's one thing that we're going to fix. And this is just the body copy. So let's style the age one, the heading one, by clicking this pencil. And we choose the heading font, and it's Caramant uh, Garmont. And uh, we keep these settings. We choose the 333 as the heading color. And then we have the heading text size. And uh, I want that to be 68 pixels for desktop. We can ac actually fix the mobile settings right now on the fly. So. 56 pixels for tablet and maybe 38 for mobile. I'll actually reduce that a little bit more like that. 35. Okay, looks nice. And then we have, um, let's go back to the desktop view. We have this text. I want that one to be a little bit bigger in the hero area. So I'll bump that one up to maybe 18 pixels. And I will also change it to this gray color okay before we do anything else i want to add the background image because the white uh, heading will not be possible to read otherwise so we go to the cogwheel in the um, section settings and to background and we'll add a background image let's take this one from the team Okay, we want to have an uh, overlay and a gradient. So let's go to the gradient settings and we can add a background gradient. And I want this gradient to be, be placed above the background image. So we set yes. And uh, well, I got what I was wishing for, but maybe a little bit too much. So we will change these colors to be a bit transparent. So the first 
part. I want to have black color and I want to have some opacity. And we have the uh, final, the second part of it. I want also to have some black color, but I want it to be lighter or more transparent. So we can actually drag it down there. And now we are going to change the angle because you can see here that it's dark uh, in the bottom and gets lighter in, all the way up to the top. But I want it to be dark from the left and lighter to the right. So we have the gradient direction which, which is 180 degrees and I'm going to change that to 90 degrees. There we go. So now we can see the preview that it's darker here and lighter here. So that's a nice design, I think. Okay, we also have a uh, divider shape. We're going to fix that one. So we're going to use the same as on the uh, homepage. So I go to design dividers and bottom. And uh, I choose uh, the divider style. It's this one. And uh, we can actually change the divider height for different devices when we are at it. So for iPad, maybe we can have 50. And for phone, I think we use 25. So we have the right angle in the corners. Good. Let's change the heading text color. So first of all, I want to add this age two settings to my global presets. So I forgot about that before. So I go to the design tab, my heading text, and uh, I click here and say, I want to apply these styles from the heading to my active presets. And I say, yes. Okay. And if we take a look, We have our settings for the H1. Perfect. So let's go back. In this case, I want this heading one to be white. So let's go to the settings and set the heading one to be white. Okay, just some more padding needed here. So I'll just grab this one. We could maybe have a hundred pixels. There we go. And uh, maybe a little bit more in the bottom. Go for maybe 150 or so. The next, next section we are making is this one. And this is a specialty section because we are mixing this column structure with this column structure. So I will show you exactly what I mean by adding a new section. And this time we are not using the blue regular section. We are using this red or orange specialty section. And the design structure I'm looking for is this one. So it's one 50% wide column. And then we could add uh, one, two, or actually three columns in this uh, right side. Okay, so we start by this right side here. And we will add a one column row. And we will add a text module. And uh, we could actually copy and paste some of the text here. Oops. Here we go. Paste as text. We make proper spaces. And this one will be in heading four. This one will be a heading two. And this one will just be regular body copy. Okay, nice. And to the left, we will add an image. So let's add an image module. We click the image to choose our image. And uh, there we have another image of the great team at our company, the Divi Crib. And uh, yeah, looks pretty nice. But if you have a sharp design eye, you can see something is off because this image here ends here and is not aligned. So they have different width and we want to fix that because this is a specialty section and we haven't set the um, default width 
to 1200 pixels as we did to the rows in the um, standard sections. So I will click the cogwheel for the specialty section. I go to the design tab and uh, sizing. And I want the inner width to have a max width of 1200 pixels instead of 1080. And there we go. You can see that we have synced the sizing. Okay, so now we will check out the reason why I choose the specialty section, not the regular section. Because when I add another row, I can actually add another row structure inside of this section. And that's something that I can't do in the regular section layout. And uh, this time we will add these three number counters. So I will add three columns in this row. And let's search for a number. And there we have it, number counter. So there we have the standard design. So we will change that. But let's have a look at the numbers first. 23 uh, employees. So we start with that one. Employees. Oops. Employees. Yeah. 23. And we will remove this percentage sign by going to elements and just set off to percentage sign. Okay, we'll go to the design tab to change these settings. So the number font should be Carla. And uh, the number font weight should be bold. It should be gold. And uh, the number text size should be 50. There we go. So let's change this subtext. Or it's actually called the title here in the number counter settings. So the font should be Carla. And uh, we do actually want to have it in uh, small caps. Okay, we go back to the design settings. And uh, it looks pretty good as is, I think. So we want to reduce uh, the spacing here. So one way of doing that is actually to go to the settings of the section, go to design sizing choose use custom gather width and set it to two so that will give us some extra space to work with and uh, i could actually reduce this one and we want to reduce this space as well so i will go to the design settings and uh, we can change the line height for this one the number so the line height could be, and this is a bit of a surprise, more. We can add extra and I even want to add some more to move it down. So this is also a little bit of a hack move, <laughs> but whatever works. As long as you don't have a line break in here, it will look nice. So uh, I will take this one and reduce some spacing there. So now it starts to look pretty nice. I think. So let's try to copy this one. One, two, and we drag and drop it. So let's see the other values. We have 72 projects and 100% happy clients, of course. So 72 projects. And then we had the percentage. Happy clients, and they are 100. And let's go to elements and turn off the or turn on the percentage sign. So this looks good, and let's have a look. So it won't break when we use a smaller screen. So this is a way to check out that everything fits on the screen. And soon it's going over to the tablet view. Okay, that was actually a little bit too big so it didn't fit so let's reduce the sizing a little bit by going to the row settings design sizing use custom gutter width and um, 
drag it down to two so this means that the spacing the air between the objects in here will uh, be smaller so now oops let's try again i grab the corner here and drag it just to see that everything fits and okay it still breaks well let's tweak it even more so we go here and uh, we'll change the sizing of the numbers and uh, now it's 50 we could uh, drag it down to maybe 45 and now i will extend the number text size by right click and say extend this value number 45 to all number counters on this page because there are only these three so now you could see that this is applied and uh, if we make another try okay it looked good but happy clients did actually line break so let's do a final little tweak so we'll uh, reduce the sizing of this title, the H3, from 16 to 14. And let's make it bold as well. I think that was what I have done in the um, demo page. And let's extend the heading title level, heading 3, to all number counters on this page. And we extend. Uh, okay, that didn't work. The text title site. Uh, size extend to 14 to all number counters on this page and uh, now it happens something here and also i want to extend the boldness of this heading so extend title font bold to all number counters there we go and now the final test if it actually works on all screen sizes yes it doesn't break Amazing. So this looks pretty nice and I want to do one final touch to make it look nice and that is adding an, an animation effect. So I could double click here to open the settings and I go to design animation and I will use the zoom effect like this. And this works really good together with the number counter since the numbers are counting up and then you have the zoom at the same time. So let's exit the visual builder and save just to preview this. So there we have, they are counting up and just to refresh to have a look at the animation, there we go. The next part is this one, it's a pretty easy one. So let's create a two column text uh, section. Let's go down here, click the plus and we create a regular section again. And we use one column to start with and we insert some text. So we have our history and pick a pick a winning team so this one should be an h4 the golden one and this one should be an h2 heading two and we set the sign text and center line good and let's now insert a two column row and a text module and uh, we could actually just take this text and uh, paste it like this just to show how it looks and now i could take this one we could copy it i can drag it and drop it there we go I could actually increase the spacing if you would like to make the readability better. So I click the gear icon or the um, cogwheel icon and I choose design, sizing, use custom gutter width. And now we'll actually uh, have a bigger one. So it's a bigger spacing here. So this might make it easier to read. And then we will add a button below this. So I add a new row. I will add a button module and uh, i will align it to the center and we could change the text contact us and we can link to the contact us page by using the dynamic content page link contact us perfect 
So let's create the next section. And that's a regular one too. And uh, we will use uh, this design. And this is actually three columns in this row. So this is one, this is two, and here we have one 50% column that is empty. So that would be, let me see, this design. So we will have a blurb module in there. Perfect. So let's start by adding the background image, this one with the dark overlay. So I will go to the section settings, background and image, and we'll add a background image from our media library. And here we have it. So we are putting on our uh, overlay. So I choose background image blend from normal to multiply and I go to background color and I choose black and I click the color to make it a bit transparent. So I drag this one down. So here we go. We have about 87% opacity. So that looks pretty nice. Let's save that one. So now we're going to style our blurbs like this. So let's go to the settings. So first of all, I'll remove this uh, body copy. No, I will not. I will have some short body copy below. So we can paste that one in there. Just remove this. There we go. And uh, we will uh, actually change this from being an image to use one of the pre-made icons in Divi. So I go down to image and icon and I will use an icon. And let's find this check mark. There we go. Okay, but now it's on top and I want it to be on the side. So let's go to design, image and icon. The icon color should be gold. And uh, I want it to be placed not on the top, but to the left. We should, of course, change the text color here. So let's go to the design settings for the text. And we have the title text. And I want that one to be Cormorant Garamond in the title. And that one should be white. And it should also be a bit bigger. Maybe something like that. And then we have the body text. And I want that one to be Carla. There we go. And I want it to be um, this light gray color actually. And uh, we can change it to maybe 15 or yeah, 15 is good. And we can reduce the line height a little bit like that I guess okay and uh, yeah let's save that let's have a look here okay so it's slightly different text here so that's why it looks a bit different but I also think that I might have used another layout so these are pretty small and I think I should use this one instead yeah there we go so now they have more have uh, more width here for the the blurbs and I could also set the design sizing gather width to two to add some more space in there. Perfect. And I will simply duplicate this and add that one out here. And then I can just uh, update the text. And uh, now I can just make three copies of this row one, two. So now there are three. And now I could just replace the text here very quickly. I would also like to add some more padding here. So let's go for like 120 and maybe 120 as well. Let's undo that. Let's see if I could grab the padding. There we go. And 120. Ah, I think I undid that one as well by mistake. So 120. Come on. There we go. The next section is this section, the co-workers. 
So this will be contact cards with some nice hover effects and some contact information and social media links. And this might look a bit complicated, but it's not. I will show you all the steps. So let's go back. And first of all, I'm going to copy this section by right click and choose copy row. Then I will click here and insert a new section. I will close this one, right click and choose paste row. So there we have our header and uh, we can just add another text there like TV all stars. Or what can we do? Oops, or you. And we remove that one. Okay. So let's add a row with three columns and start building. So we'll first add an image module for the portrait image. We'll click here and we choose someone from the media library. And you can see now that this color is square and it's in color. And we will make this round and we will make it uh, grayscale. So by doing that, we go to design and we choose order. So you can see that this is perfectly square. It's the same height and width. So that's something you have to do first before you can make them around in Divi. So uh, we have rounded corners in the border settings. And uh, here I can just add a value to get some rounding. But I can type like 50% for all sides and then we will have this nice round design so that looks really nice and professional and you didn't have to do anything in photoshop to make this one round then we have the border style and i want to add a golden border so i'll add one or two pixels let's go for two and the golden color like that perfect okay so then we had the effect that it's uh, grayscale or black and white when it's idle and when i hover it's in color so let's fix that one too. We go to filters that we used before on the logos. And now I want to set the saturation to zero on idle, which will make it black and white or grayscale. And I click the hover uh, icon and activate hover mode. And now I can set 100% saturation. And that means that it will be in color when hovering. So here's the idle and here's the hover mode. Nice. Okay, we'll add the name, the title and description. So let's click the plus sign to insert a text module. So you can see that there are some modules that are coming back that you use pretty often. And uh, we can actually paste this text or copy this text and paste it to save some time. Here we go. So this one we can use the heading three. And this one should be the heading four, the title. And then we have a little bit smaller bold text there for the description. So let's fix that. And it's Carla, but the sizing is maybe 15. And let's make it bold like that let's make it a little bit gray as well okay now we want to center line this text so we browse down to the text alignment and set it to center looks pretty good actually this is not a bold text so we can change that if we want to keep the same look so let's go to regular there we go Okay, we have dividers and then we have some contact information. So let's add the dividers. Press the plus button and I find the divider module. Yes, I want to show the divider. We go to the design tab, go to line and we change the color to this. Uh, no, we take this really light gray color and we set it to centered like that. Looks pretty good. And we'll add the contact information below the divider. 
there we go so text and let's copy this text and we can paste it there we go and let's make this a click to call link by clicking the link tool and say link colon and we have the phone number and just remove other signs than numbers like that now people can call just by tapping it in mobile shift enter to make a line break and we want to have this uh, linked as well sometimes it will be linked automatically if not just type mail to colon and the email address and it will be a tap or click to email link okay let's center align this text as well there we go then i will just clone or duplicate this divider and i will place it below this contact information and then i will probably reduce the sizing here but let's wait a little bit longer for that uh, and then we have the social media links and i will actually import uh, this one that we made from the to the header and the footer and i will just make a little tweak to change the colors so let's click in this column and the plus sign and we will add from library and here we have our social media icons and we can see that they are there but they are white so it's hard to see them so i will click uh, double click them oops now i happen to duplicate it there we go to the settings and let's go to the facebook icon so let's go to the design tab icon and icon color set it to gold so i can actually test how it looks in hover okay yeah it would look like that so we have to change the icon color on hover to white and i will copy the icon styles and we go back and i let's see if i can paste it directly in here i think that would be possible paste item styles wow that's nice and the last one paste item styles perfect and i will center align these social media icons starting to look nice i will just have to tighten this up a little bit but first i will go to the row settings design sizing and yes it's the custom gather width again i will drag it down to two to make give a little bit more room inside here and uh, now it actually looks kind of good i don't have to do any tweaking here with the margins so one more thing that you can see here is that we have a shadow around here or we also actually have a thin line around it so that we should add and then we have the hover effect so this is a little bit more complicated you might think because now we have several modules here so i can't add a line here and a line here and a line here that will be messy so we'll solve it by going into the row settings and now i can style this column this whole column so i press the cogwheel and go to design we choose border and i want to have a one pixel border like that and it should be light light gray and i also want to add a box shadow and i want to use this box shadow that's famous now from the blog read and from the blurbs on the home page and i also want to change the hover effect here so i will click the shadow blur strength activate hover mode and i will drag it up to maximum on hover okay starts to look like something but i would also like to um, increase the padding here so it won't go all the way out to the edges so let's do that for this column we choose spacing and we have padding so i might just add like 40 pixels top 40 pixels bottom and the same to the left and to the right so there we go starting to look really beautiful so now we have the last thing before we uh, create the two other ones and that's the hover effect uh, that will lift it up a little bit you can see that it jumps up a few pixels so if you join me in the earlier chapters you know how we do this i go to the column settings i go to design and to transform 
and we choose this one, the second one, transform translate. I deactivate the chain so I just can change the height. Uh, and on hover, I click the hover icon and active hover mode. And now I can lift it up like minus 10 pixels I would like to have. Okay, sometimes it's hard to do that dragging, so I just type it on my keyboard. So here's the idle and here's the hover. Okay, that looks really, really nice. I also want to go into the image settings and make one file and tweak because I want to center align this. So this will be center aligned on all screen sizes so it won't be left aligned anywhere. So now I can just copy and paste this. And again, I don't want to copy and paste every single module here. So I'll go into the settings of the row and I delete column number two and column number three. And now I will duplicate this and I will duplicate this. So now I have three identical columns. So this is extremely efficient. So now I can just go here and I can change, for example, the images. I can change the text and the links. And then I have created my um, employee gallery. And of course, maybe I have more than three employees. Then I just take this row and I duplicate it. And now I have six employees and I can keep doing this forever and ever. So let's just exit the Visual Builder and uh, we will preview this. So here we go. We have a nice hero area. We have our image and uh, we have our counter modules, number counters. We have our history. We have the blurbs and we have our employees with a nice, nice hover effect. So the next thing that we are going to do is adding our favorite clients. And we've already done this on the homepage. So this is recycling. So I will show you a quick way of just adding this information and sharing between pages. So one way we could have done it was by saving this, this section from the homepage to our Divi library. Another way of doing it is just going to the home page, activating the Visual Builder. And let's say that I just want to recycle this content on another page. I can just right click the section and choose copy section. I can go to my second page. Uh, sorry, that was the wrong one. So I will exit the Visual Builder and I will go to About Us. And I will enable the Visual Builder. There we go. I will click here and I will right click and choose paste section. And here we go. So that was a pretty quick move. That's it. We can actually have a look, zoom out using this uh, magnifying glass just to have a helicopter view of our about us page. And uh, it looks pretty neat, I think. And you could, of course, go through it and fine tune all the tablet and, and mobile design settings. But I think you know the drill now. So we will move on creating the news page. This news page will dynamically display all the posts from your website. And this setup could easily be used for a blog as well. So below this hero area, you can see that we have a sidebar to the right with a search field. We have link to the post categories and we link to our social media. And in the middle, we have a list of our blog posts with a featured image, the post title. We have the publish date, the category, which is linked. And uh, we have an excerpt and a read more text. So. This is the list showing the latest. It's in um, date order. And if I want to display older entries, I can just click the pagination. Let's get started. So we jump into the development site. 
And first of all, I want to recycle some of the design settings that we made on the homepage where we use the blog grid, which is an, another uh, setting for uh, the blog module in Divi. So here we go. To recycle some of the settings here, I will enable the visual builder. And this is maybe something that I should have done when we created the homepage, but better now than never. So I will edit the blog post module and just right click the purple top bar and I will say apply styles to active presets. So this means that I will save all the design settings we made with the fonts and styling in the blog module and this will become the default design. So now I can exit this page. And when we head back to the news page uh, and publish a blog post module, it will already have the correct fonts and styling. So I go to the news page, which for now is empty, looks kind of dull. So let's fix that by enabling the visual builder. And we will not build from scratch this time. And uh, we will not use a pre-made layout, but we will clone an existing page because I want to reuse, recycle this hero area from the About Us page. You can see that it has the same look and feel. So I will use that on the news page as well and just switch the images and the copy. So we click clone existing page and this is also a great time, time saver in Divi. So I see a list of my existing pages and I will choose the About Us page to clone. Okay, so now I will simply delete the stuff that we won't need on this page. So for example, this section, I will just hit the trash can and uh, I will delete this one as well. And I will delete this one, this one and this one. So we're just keeping the header. Okay, so let's switch the copy in this one. And, uh, let's see, we have be informed and our latest news. Maybe we can use some capital letters there. Muse, news, okay. And let's switch the background image by going to the section settings, background, choosing the image. And uh, let's find a nice picture, this one. There we go. So we didn't have to make everything from scratch again. So let's create a new section for our blog post uh, content. So it's a regular section and I want to have one wide column and uh, uh, one a bit smaller column. So two thirds and one third. And to the left, we will use the blog module. There we go. And you can see that it uses the um, blog grid design. But since this is a more narrow design, it's just one blog grid item per per column or per row. So uh, let's change that. We go to the design settings, layout, and instead of grid, we should choose full width. It looks a little bit the same, but it isn't. Uh, and now we should just make some tweaks. We want to remove the box shadow. So let's go down to box shadow and choose none. Okay, already looks better. And uh, that's about it actually. It's kind of nice design, I would say. This works fine for a blog page or a news page. Uh, we go back to the content tab, click content. And uh, we want to choose five blog posts. And uh, the reason for that is you don't want to have too much images and, and stuff on one page. It could be heavy to load, a long page load time, which is bad for your SEO and user experience. And uh, you also, uh, I also want to display the feature with the pagination. And we have six blog posts, so that's one of the reasons why I choose to display five posts on this page. So let's uh, go down to elements and on the home page, we didn't want to display the pagination, but this time I do. So I will cho choose yes for show pagination. And there we have it. It displays the older entries, but it's baby blue, doesn't look too good. So let me click the pencil 
the shortcut to the pagination text styling and let's choose the correct font which is Carla and let's choose the correct color which is gold yeah so there we have it this is the pagination so let's create the sidebar and that's this design and you don't have to use the wordpress widgets and stuff as in the old days now we can create this directly in the div builder so i'll start out with a search module there we go and we can have a placeholder text inside we can say search which elements to display i don't think we need the search button so we can remove that being minimalistic and uh, here we can decide which type of content that should be included in the search results and i will exclude pages i just want this to be a news article search and i want to display all categories we want to have a heading on top of the search field so i will actually add a text module above And we can say find more and let's make that an h3 okay and we'll put that above the search field now let's reduce the space here more like okay i want to add a divider we go to the design tab line and i want to use this light gray color below this one we should add our categories so text module and we say categories it's a heading and then we have inspiration and we have case which is our two categories so i like to type all text before i style it and uh, let's mark these two and uh, press here for a bullet list and let's make this one a heading three as well okay and we will link this one and i think it's news category inspiration choose okay and let's make a link for the cases as well news category case so i can just duplicate this divider so we don't have to style it again like that and uh, we should now add some social media follow icons so let's start with the text module and say follow us and let's make that a h3 and uh, now we will include the social media icons so i just click here for adding a new module and now i will add from library which is my social media icons from the library and they are white so that's why i can see them if you can't find them here we can go to the wireframe mode and uh, i can click this gear icon and uh, we can go back now to the visual display the desktop so i go to the facebook to change that one it should be gold instead of white and um, the design tab the icon settings for the facebook icon and we set that to gold and when it's hovered let's click the hover icon and uh, that's how it looks now not too good so i want to change the icon color to white on hover so it's white on gold so this is the idle design and this is the hover design perfect so let's click the back button and now i will copy the styles from the facebook icon copy item styles paste item styles where do we have that there we go paste item styles i don't know why i have to do that twice but hey as long as it works okay but this is kind of floating in the air so let's let's change that and maybe also let's go to the search field i think i forgot one setting design and we have the search text there we go so field font yes my eye caught something there let's change that to carla so i will create a, a 
gold golden frame for this one, a golden border. So to do that, uh, I will open the settings for this row and I will go to the second column, clicking the cogwheel and to the design tab and to the border tab. And uh, I will I will add a border width of one pixel like that. And I want it to be in gold. Looks a little bit better, but we need some spacing here. So let's fix that. So I browse down in the design tab and um, no, I browse up and there we have the spacing tab. So let's add 40 pixels of padding and uh, we click this chain to make it apply to both top and bottom and we do the same thing for right and left. So now it looks a lot better. Okay, I can see that I've actually used another row structure here. So let's fix that. But first of all, I can also see that there's a small gap here and I've used a bigger gap and that's the good old gutter width. So let's fix that first. So we go to the row settings, the design tab, sizing, use custom gutter width. Yes, drag that up to four. And now we can see that the spacing is increased, but still this shouldn't be as wide as this and we want more space for the blog feed. So in the row settings, I can change the column structure and I can show you two ways to do that. One way is to click the column and click this icon for column structure. And then I get all the column structure options here. But I could also enter the row settings and from there I can drop down this list. Okay, so now we have this design and I want to change it to this design. So that's a pretty quick way of doing it. Okay, have I missed something? Yes, I have. We have this text. So let's add some follow us text. Just hit enter, click the paste as text icon and then paste the text. Okay, so maybe we can fix some of the spacings here. I think actually one thing we should do is to go into the divider settings line and it should be positioned vertically centered and uh, I can actually extend the line position by right clicking it and say that all dividers should be vertically centered on this page extend so there was it was just one more but that's a quick way of fixing it and now I can just drag here to make it a little bit more slim and drag this one and maybe this one maybe a little less spacing here a little bit less there maybe a little less there it's a nice blog design and we are going to reuse this layout later when we create the category pages and also the search result page in the Divi theme builder. Mm -hmm.